Okay, this is a diagram from your textbook. Um, just some general features. So up here is amphioxus like non-vertebrate chordate. And so this is, um, th this is a generic cephalochordate. And below here you have a hypothetical primitive vertebrate. So this is a hypothetical form based on living representatives that haven't changed much since they first appeared on the scene. So amphioxus has an endostyle, it has a notochord, and it has a nerve cord, and it also has a postanal tail. <clears throat> and these general features are also found in other invertebrate chordates and, and of course, all other, of, of all the vertebrates. And um, you just look to your textbook to, uh, to see how the hypothetical vertebrate, primitive vertebrate um, shares these traits as well. And you'll learn about uh, these traits in their, in their regular form and their derived form um, throughout, throughout this course. Okay, the three major groups of the chordates that, that you'll see in this lab are as follows. Tunicates, cephalochordates, and vertebrates. So if you go back to that first tree, that tree that you saw, These are the three groups. Okay, within the tunicates, you have two groups, the sea squirts and the house builders, or more formally, class Acidiaceae or class Larvacea. <clears throat> within the tunicates, you have solitary forms or colonial forms. And I'll show you pictures and go over the biology of each one. <clears throat> Okay, so these are what the tunicates, these are what the um, the tunicates that are ascidians look like. Um, the common names for these guys are sea squirts. This is a solitary individual, a solitary species, and this is also a solitary species. This is a colonial species. Um, just to draw the distinction between solitary and colonial species, is a single adult, um, a single adult of a solitary species has two siphons, and I'll go over the biology of of this um, in a moment. But they have two siphons. One is an in-current, one other one's an out-current, and they filter feed. Um, in the colonial forms, what happens is the X-current siphon, so where the water comes out, gets fused. And so the, all of the individuals in the, in the clonal colony um, share the same X-current siphon. However, the in-current siphon is retained. So each dot here that you see is an individual's in current siphon and the organism, all the individuals are fused to form a single X current siphon. Okay, um, this is what a solitary sea squirt looks like. And this is a cartoon diagram of what of uh, its major parts. You have an in current siphon an X current siphon. You have a pharyngeal basket, <clears throat> and you have an endostyle. Beyond the pharyngeal basket, you have a stomach, and then the intestine, and here's the anus. The nervous system is very, very small, not much really. Uh, this dorsal ganglion pretty much is a remnant of, of the nervous system that I will discuss in the larvae. And that's it, this is the adult. Now the way just to go back. So this is a real organism. So this is an incurrent siphon, X current siphon, the pharyngeal basket, endostyle, right here, and then the gut, and the anus. So water comes in and goes out that way. How does this thing make a living? Well, what happens is water comes in this way, and with the water comes food particles, and these guys are filter feeders. So as water comes in, it actually goes out too. Um, when it goes out, whatever remains after any food is digested it also goes out with it. But just going back, if well, as water and food come in, what happens is food particles get stuck in this pharyngeal basket here. And then once the food gets stuck there, this organ, the endostyle, secretes mucus, <clears throat> and it secretes mucus uh, in. It secretes mucus in um, one direction but on both sides. 
so this way, and then you wouldn't be able to see it, but the other way, but in the same direction, all going this way. And the mucus actually traps the food particles until both ends of the mucus that are being secreted converges on the other side. And there are cilia that help the mucus along this way, and there's other cilia that help the mucus plus the food now get pushed down and then ultimately get digested by the stomach. And then once it's processed, any leftover parts get expelled out the X current. Okay, again, so this is the this is the adult tunicate solitary species generalized diagram. Okay, so in pharyngeal basket, endostyle, endostyle secretes mucus, cilia pushes it along this way. Okay, so in, from left to right in this diagram. And then the, the mucus with the food converges and it goes downwards, processed by the food and out anus. But how is this organism a chordate? So I mentioned there were four characteristics that define chordates and how is this organism, which only seems to have an endostyle, still a chordate? There are three other features that are missing. Well, the answer to that is actually in its larval form. So this guy is an adult tunicate, but the larval form actually has all of the parts of chordate. It has, um, well, before I go into that, this is what a larval form looks like. It's called a tadpole larvae or a tunicate larvae. Um, it has a tail. And these things, when they're born, um, they don't feed. They, they swim around, basically look for a structure to become permanently attached to. And these structures out here is what this organism uses to find a place and then attach to a place. And once it's attached, its tail gets digested away. And then this part gets fully developed into that, the adult. Now, in the larvae, you can actually see the parts of what will become the adult. Like here, you have an incurrent siphon. Here, you have an endostyle, pharyngeal basket, and next current siphon. And this is where the bottom part of the animal will be. And then all of this, so there's a, there's a, there's a dorsal hollow nerve cord here. All of this gets digested and forms a little blip right there. That becomes a dorsal ganglion. Okay, so does this animal have all the features? Yes, it does. It has a dorsal hollow nerve cord. It has a notochord in the tail. Um, it also has an endostyle. And since the anus of the organism, which is actually right here, since that's the anus, it also has a postanal tail. So that's that's where that's why we know that um, sea squirts are actually chordates. The other major group, so let me just go back. Okay, larvacea, we just covered sea squirts, so larvacea within tunicates. The other major group are called larvacea. And larvacea basically look like tadpole larvae. But instead of metamorphosing, they actually, um, they actually live their entire lives looking like the tadpole larvae. They have all the parts, the basic parts of, of, the, of what you would expect in a chordate. Um, but what's unique is these guys also have specialized cells. And the unique, the unique aspect of the biology of this organism is that they actually build an entire house full of mucus using specialized cells from their trunk. And in this house are a series of elaborate tubes and tubules and, and um, little pathways for water to go. And you, as you can see in this diagram, the water actually, the flow of the water is actually controlled with, within this mucus mansion. Um, water comes in and it comes out in this particular species, this way. And so this organism filter feeds just like the adult sea squirt feeds. Remember that the larval, the larval sea squirt does not feed. Its main goal is to find a place to become the adult. But the adult sea squirt filter feeds. And these guys, its close relatives, filter feed. And the endostyle contributes to that and helps it feed. And these are diagrams of more larvaceans.